Mark chapter 11, verse 12, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he, that's Jesus, was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came near, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, to the tree, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now skip down to the 20th verse. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest, is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, How faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now I want you, I want to, you to focus, well, us to focus our attention on this statement in that 22nd verse. Have faith in God. Or, as the margin of the scripture reads, have the faith of God. Or, as Greek scholars tell us, a more literal translation is that Jesus said, Have the God kind of faith. Now that's what I want to speak to you tonight on, is the God kind of faith. Now Jesus just demonstrated that he had the God kind of faith. He saw this fig tree afar off with it having leaves. And he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he was come to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Well, someone said, what was he looking for figs for then if it wasn't time yet for figs? But in that country, those trees that retra retain their leaves usually also had figs. That's the reason he was looking. And so he said, he spoke to the tree. He said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. On the morrow, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. And then that brought this startling and amazing statement from the lips of Jesus. How faith in God. How the faith of God. How the God kind of faith. For verily... I say unto you that whosoever shall say and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now then Jesus defines and describes for us the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith is the kind of faith that believes in his heart and then he says with his mouth what he believes in his heart and it comes to pass. 
Jesus demonstrated that he had that kind of faith, for he believed that what he said would come to pass, and so he said to the tree, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Now that's the same kind of faith that spoke this world into existence. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible tells us, the 11th chapter, that by faith, the third verse, by faith we understand that God created the worlds in the beginning. How did God do it? God believed that what he said would come to pass. He said, let there be an earth, and there was. Praise God. Amen. He spoke into existence the heavens and the earth. He spoke into existence the trees. He spoke into existence the vegetable kingdom. He spoke into existence the animal kingdom. He spoke into existence the heavens as well as the earth. He spoke into existence the moon and the sun and the stars and the universe. He just said it, and it was. That's the God kind of faith. He believed what he said would come to pass, and it did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus demonstrated he had that kind of faith. And now then he said to the disciples, you have the God kind of faith. That kind of faith that believes in his heart. And then he says with his mouth what he believes, and it comes to pass. Well, somebody said, I want it. I'm a praying that God would give me that kind of faith. Well, friends, let me say it kindly as I can, first of all, that you're wasting your time if that's what you're doing. Because, you see, you already have that kind of faith. Every believer, every believer has a measure of the God kind of faith. Now, Romans chapter 12, verse 3 said, I say to every man that's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, my friends, that's not every man in the world. No, every man in the world doesn't have faith. Because if you'd care to look right over, over it in First Thessalonians, Paul said, writing to the church at Thess Thess to the church, this first letter he wrote to the church in Thessalonica, every man hath not faith, he said. Do you know he said that? So every man in the world does not have this faith. Every believer does. Now look at that third verse again of that twelfth chapter of Romans. Some have just focused their attention on the one thought that said, every man. But notice that it's every man among you, not every man in the world. Again, Paul did not write this letter, this epistle, to sinners or to the world. He addresses this epistle in Romans 1, 7, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Doesn't he? So he said, I say to every man among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man, remember that's every man among you, the measure of faith. So every believer, every child of God, every Christian does have a measure of the God kind of faith. Now let me go a step further to prove that to you. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Did you hear that? By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. The faith is not of yourself. He's not talking about the grace. Everybody knows that's not of yourself. It's his grace. He's talking about the faith that you're saved by is not of yourself. It is not a natural human faith. It was given to the sinner by God. Well, how did God give the sinner faith to be saved? Romans 10, 17 tells us exactly. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God then, notice these expressions, so then faith cometh. 
according as God had dealt. You are saved by faith, and that not of yourself, it's the guilt. So Paul says, the word of God says, that this faith is given, it's dealt, it cometh. Praise God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, chapter, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. This Bible, this message of God is called the word of faith. Why is it called the word of faith? Because it causes faith to come into the heart even of the unsaved. It causes a measure of the kind of faith that spoke the universe into existence to be dealt to our hearts. Faith is given to us through the Word, for it is the measure of faith. Now let's go on reading there, friends, in that eighth, in that tenth chapter of Romans, please. Again, read the eighth verse with me. But what saith it? The Word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, now you notice that agrees exactly with what Jesus said, whosoever shall say and not doubt in his heart. See the idea of believing something in your heart and saying it with your mouth. Jesus believed it, he said it. God believed it, he said it. The earth came into existence. Now what saith it? The, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Friends, you see that measure of faith that is dealt to the sinner through hearing the word, then he uses it. I said the sinner uses it to create the reality of salvation in his own life. Now, just when did God save you anywhere? Anyway, oh, somebody said about 10 o'clock one night. Oh, no, you're mistaken. God saved you when Jesus died for you and rose from the dead nearly 2,000 years ago. It just then became a reality to you when you believed it and confessed it. Amen. Salvation belongs to every man. Every man, every woman in this world has a legal right to salvation. Jesus died for the whole world, not just you and me. That's the reason I like the statement that Brother Osmond makes. No man has a right to hear the gospel twice until everybody's heard it at least once. And every man has a right to hear it because salvation has already been provided, bought, and paid for him. And you see, when the truth is preached to him, it causes faith to come. And then you see, with his heart, he believes what he heard, and with his mouth, he confesses it. When he does, he creates a reality of salvation in his own life by his faith. With the mouth, confession is made unto. Can you grasp that? Can you see that? Oh, praise God. Praise God. Now notice as we go on reading in this 10th chapter of Romans. In that 13th verse he said, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But in the 14th verse he said, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? They cannot do it. So then in the 17th verse he sums it up, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And so... The same thing's true on anything that you receive from God. The God kind of faith comes by hearing God's word. You know, God doesn't have any other kind of faith except the God kind. That's the only kind he has. Praise the Lord. So then faith cometh, the God kind of faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, God deals, God gives, or God causes to come into the hearts of those who hear the God kind of faith. 
No wonder Jesus said, Take heed how you hear. For you know you can just let it go in this ear and out that ear and it won't give you faith. Faith will not come. You can just act as though the word of God were a tale or a fairy story of some kind and faith will not come. But I'll tell you, when you accept it reverently and sincerely and act upon it, faith comes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.